APA Decoded Part 4, References. In this section, Part 4 for References, our last section, we're going to discuss how to format the references section of your paper and review the most common references, reference forms. So we're really talking about that reference list at the end of your paper. That reference list provides a reliable way for the readers of your paper to locate the works authors cite to acknowledge previous scholarship. So let's say they're reading your paper and they say, oh, wow, Harris 1989 was mentioned in this paper. I want to know more about that study so they can they can find that in-text citation in the middle of your paper, and then they can turn to your reference list at the end of your paper and actually find more about that, uh, that journal article, and then find out exactly where it's from, where it was published. And then they can go to their library and, and look it up. It's a reliable way to find it. So... You only include works in your reference list that you have cited in the text. Um, so your reference list is, again, a compiled list alphabetically um, by author, by the last name of the author, uh, based on your in-text citations. So you do not include anything in your reference list that has not been used as an in-text citation. You don't throw extra stuff in there that you think they're going to find interesting. If it's not in, and I'm going to say that again, if it's not used in an in-text citation, it does not appear in the reference list. Okay, very important. If you have more than one entry by the same author, list them by publication with the earliest year first. So I have a couple of examples here. Um, this is all alphabetical, as you can see. I've taken this from the D section of a reference list. And you can see I have three references here by the same author, Dake K. So first name is something K. We don't know what it is. Maybe Kevin. Who knows? Um, you never know what the first name is because it's always abbreviated a letter. And then last name is Dake. So Dake. And then um, we have three different uh, things here by him. And they are all listed by uh, publication with the earliest year first. So first is 1990, then is 1991, and then is 1992. Um, so that kind of gives you a feel for how that works out. Now, what if I have two entries by the same author in the same exact year? I'm trying to get more complicated as time goes on. So references by the same author or by the same authors, if you have like two authors or three exact authors that like to work together or so on and so forth with the same publication year are arranged alphabetically by the title and um, so so exact same author exact same year so the next thing we're going to use is title to organize them alph alphabetically but we exclude things like a or an or the because those are not important and and that is then going to be what we use to alphabetize them. Um, so in our example here, we have Kahan, um, same author, Kahan, uh, DM. Two things also published in 2013. But if you look at the title, one starts with the word even, and the other one starts with the word ideology. So because even comes before ideology, that one is listed first. You'll also notice that there's some lowercase letters, like an A and a B, that are placed immediately after the year. And this is done to help organize them, um, especially with respect to the in-text citation. So that when you're reading the in-text citation and you see Kahan 2013 and Kahan 2013, you don't get those two confused because there's two of those. So... It, you stick an A next to the first one, and you stick a B next to the second one. So in your in-text citations, you'd see Kahan 2013 A, and the second one you'd see Kahan 2013 B. And uh, you use that both in the reference list and in the in-text citations, whichever format you use them in, whether you use them as the 
subject of a sentence or is just a uh, par parenthetical in-text citation at the end of a sentence. So use the date and the letter when you cite those in your paper. All right, how would you cite a periodical or, or a journal in uh, APA format? So basically you cite using the author's last name, comma, abbreviation for their first name and middle name if they give you the middle name. Sometimes they don't give you the middle name. If there's more than one author, you would do the same thing, comma, last name, comma, abbreviation for first name or middle name. Um, APA, again, only uses initials for first names and middle names, so it's always the same way. You never list their first or middle names. And then after that, you, uh, you list the year for the uh, periodical. And then after that comes the title of the article. And then some articles have a subtitle, so you, you put that as well. Um, then comes the volume, uh, sorry, the, uh, the title of the periodical. And the title of the periodical is always in, um, oh, I should say, let me go back to the title of the article. The article title is not in quotes uh, or italics. And the first letter of the title, subtitle, and proper nouns are capitalized. Um, going back to the journal, uh, the so now on to the journal title. The journal title is in italics because um, this is the bigger work that everything appears in, and the bigger work is always in italics, and it uses traditional title case, so where the all the letters are capitalized in terms of the first letter of the word. So, um, so for example, uh, if you had a journal called Child Development, the C would be capitalized and the D would be capitalized. If you had a book, um, it wouldn't be the same. So we like to uh, put more emphasis on uh, periodicals and journals, so we like to capitalize the first letter of every word. Um, after that, you would have your volume number, um, and that is also in italics. Then you would have your issue number in the parenthesis. It's not in italics. And then comes your page numbers. We don't use the PP abbreviation, but we do list the page actual numbers. And then your DOI number. So what is the DOI number? You've probably seen these on journal articles. That is the digital object identifier. It's a unique alphanumeric string that identifies content and provides a persistent link to its location on the internet. And we like to include those in our references. So here's an example of an APA journal reference that includes a DOI. Uh, so this is from the journal Environment, Development, and Sustainability. You can see that's in italics and the E, D, and S are all capitalized, first letter of every word. But the actual uh, article title, Contributions of Sustainability Science to the Study of Environmental Health Problems, that only has the first letter of the very first word capitalized. The rest are not. All right, what if you found your article online? How would that look? It pretty much looks the same way because nowadays... Most of you guys are not going into an old-fashioned library and pulling a periodical off the shelf. You're getting your journal articles off of the online library. Um, so same format as prior. Um, you, you have your DOI in there. The only reason I'm showing you this slide, the really only difference is if you don't have a DOI, um, that is where you would instead use the the phrase retrieved from and show the journal URL um, to show where it's being retrieved from for an online journal. Um, in rare cases, almost all journals now um, have the DOI for that journal that is online. But in a very rare case where you find a PDF of an article online and you can't find the DOI, um, then after immediately following the page numbers, you would instead say retrieved from, and then you would include the URL of where that uh, article came from. That's the only difference there. All right, how do you reference a book? Um, a book also has author um, with 
lowercase, um, sorry, author with um, abbreviated first initial and middle initial and then your year. And our title of our book is also in italics, except only the first letter is capitalized. Then we have the location of where the book is published, colon, and the publisher. Um, our examples here, a couple of examples here. One book in print, which was published in Oxford, England. And then one electronic book. How does an electronic book look? Well, the only difference here is after the title of the book, because we don't have a location, we instead list the um, electronic book retrieved from and the URL where it's found. So that kind of retrieved from URL is pretty standard uh, for a lot of online resources. The APA reference style for a chapter of a book, which um, you might use this pretty often as well. Um, in this case, we have the authors, the year. The first thing that comes here, which is not italicized, is the title of the chapter. And then we have a period, and then we have the word in. And we list uh, our first editor, our second editor, and if we have any more. In abbreviation or in a parenthesis, we say eds to indicate that these are the editors. And then in italics, we have title of the book. Notice that for the title of the book, only the first letter of the title is capitalized. And then we have the pages of this book. Um, so if this is a like a, a particular chapter, these would be the page ranges for that chapter. And then the location where it's published and the publisher. An example of what this might look like. Um, this is language acquisition, socialization. So that's our chapter title here. And this is in the book Culture Theory, Essays on Mind, Self, and Emotion. Gives you the page range from Cambridge University Press. What about an online document? Same kind of um, pattern here. Uh, author, year, title of work, retrieve from source. A um, couple of examples here where the I, I kind of picked these to show you if we have an example where there's no like person author, but instead it's an organization author. Boston Public Schools, if you have an organization that's the author and they don't actually list a, a human being, it's okay to put the organization that's that's publishing that document. So Boston Public Schools, the publication date, if it's something like a newsletter, um, Newsletters, you could actually list the month with the year uh, and are retrieved from after the title. Um, FAO publishes updates every year. So FAO is our, our, our author here, 2020, State of the World Fisheries and Aquaculture, and are retrieved from URL to kind of give you a feel for how that pattern works. How do I cite a PowerPoint presentation from the Internet? Um, very similar again, your author if you don't have a year, um, it's common to use in.d. for no date. Uh, try to find the year if you can, but if you can't, that's how you would cite, put that in there. Um, your, your title is in italics. Uh, usually they put brackets for PowerPoint slides to indicate exactly what that is. Or if it's a recorded lecture, you could also put that in there too. Um, retrieved from, and then you'd put your URL. Okay, so we've gone through a lot of stuff. Hopefully that answered any of your questions that you might have. We've talked about the reasons for using APA, the basic APA formatting requirements, the author date method, the requirements for citing sources in text, and the formatting references that are cited at the end of your paper. Don't hesitate to ask questions if you have any questions about this tutorial.